Hey everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. I got my four foot long sluice box inside. I've had it in here uh, acclimatizing, if that's the right way to say it, to the temperature and the humidity in here. And I'm going to turn this into a miller table. So I don't have primer. I couldn't read that in the store when I got it. So I didn't get primer and uh, so I'm gonna hope for the best I don't mind if it sinks soaks in a lot because this is a lot of uh, paint for what I need so if I have to do a few coats that's fine there's been no sap this is old 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 wood so there's been no sap coming out so any there won't be anything bleeding through and uh, it'll be better for the sluice box to be covered in paint anyway to protect it when it's in use again as a sluice box but right now I want to use it for the winter as a miller table for fine gold recovery so I'm going to go ahead and paint it with a flat black uh, Rust-Oleum ultra cover uh, yeah ultra cover and see what happens I am not sanding it absolutely perfectly smooth I have seen some miller tables that have um, some very very slightly porous surface I do believe I've got to brush this off again there's some tiny grains in it but I um, thinking that the wood grain is going to help me a little bit the, the super super fine fibers in the wood it's relatively smooth and the grain does flow this way which is great so there won't be anything trapped in uh, ridges along this way well we'll see how it goes I do need to seal in these gaps anyway with the paint and I'm hoping that it'll, it'll, uh, it'll do that for me. Well there's the first coat. It's starting to dry quick. It's really quick drying. I'm not worried about perfection. Any imperfections will help slow down the gold but uh, in the wood grain as well. But the idea is to waterproof this and make it a flat black color so I can see the gold better. I want to explain what is a miller table. Well, a miller table is, uh, well, first I got to tell you what a sluice box is. Let me get my miniature one here. There's a tiny sluice box. And a sluice box, for those of you that don't know, I got a lot of viewers, by the way, that uh, are watching my homesteading videos. You uh, put this in a river or a fast flow of water and put in your, your mix sand and uh, gold and then water runs through the riffles and the gold drops out and stays behind so I have the sluice mats a lot of you have seen that in the summer that I ran all summer long in here and now I'll be able to remove the sluice mats and use it as a miller table so you run this all summer long and you get your concentrates of black sand and uh, there's your black sands and gold concentrates after that's what it looks like first run it through your uh, sluice box and you get your concentrates dark colored stuff and then you can run it down a super slow flowing miller table and there's just going to be a, a flat sheet of water coming down here super slow at a five degree angle to let the, the gold will fall out down here and stay and any of the black sands that are round it will tumble on down and out and my issue is I'm having trouble losing the flakes the super fine flower gold that I'm finding in my property and uh, because the flakes will catch the water in a flash flowing system and fly on out and in the miller table when it's flat with with uh, no riffles and a super fine flat flow of water the gold will fall flat and be held there by the water and hopefully I'll get more fine gold that way well I got a second coat on I want a good thick coat I'm gonna put a third coat on tomorrow and make sure it's good I'll probably paint this too just so it looks better I've hit it with a third coat you can see my reflection you see me I got the seams pretty good in there now this has a bluish color, but it turns black. So, sealing up good. I put it on pretty thick this time. 
Well, many days have gone by, and I've left this set to uh, fully dry and cure. I realized that it's going to take way too much to get these cracks filled just with paint. So, so I got some silicone, uh, Loctite, really good name, and made for aquariums and water, underwater use. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't have a tripod and I don't have room where I'm working, so I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and give you an update when I'm done. Well, now that is a seal. Now I'll let that set up for a day or so, and then I have to finish the this part to keep water from splashing out, and I want to put a board down here or something, plastic maybe, to keep the water from being turbulent coming down the, the board. So I cut some pieces of wood to close this in to help regulate the water flow and, and calm it down so I get a, a flat sheen along the surface of the milling table. So I'm going to screw these on, and then, uh, now I haven't painted these obviously. When we have better weather, I'll sand them, paint them, silicone everything. Right now I just want to test this to see if it even works. There's the box. And I just shoved this in. I'm not going to screw it down. I don't know how much space I want down here underneath that, so I'll experiment with that as I go. Well, I've hooked it up, but I'm having a nightmare of a time getting it to flow flat across the table. And it wants to flow on one side or another and stream. And if I try to smooth it out like this, it dams up on the back side and just causes it to flow out behind. So I'm having a really hard time adjusting this. I had to remove this board because it was just flown out the back. Whoops, that of course will flow it out the back. I don't have it secured, so I can get it to spread out and then watch that. The material, the paint, is anti, <laughs> it's water repelling paint. Who could have known that? <laughs> so that is a problem. And it just, the water just sort of flows itself together like a sticky mass. So I got some working to do to try to spread this out. See there? But now it's damming up behind. I can adjust the water flow, but over on this side I still don't have a good pattern. So it's not working out. See here, it's repelling water. So I've got to experiment a bit with this to get it to work right. Took away the water repellent factor and I got a smooth sheen of water. Uh, used some steel wool, roughed it up. Got a little bit here. I might be able to hit that again in the future, but I took away that water repelling factor. That makes a lot of difference there. All right, first run. I don't know, it might be better without the light. I can't tell. You got a glare from the above light. I put a little bit on, a little teaspoon on. Let's see if I can get better light on the subject. All right, that's some heavy stuff. There's some, a little bit of blondes collecting here for some odd reason. They're flowing up to this point, but uh, we'll see. Now down over here, I've got a pan with a rock in it to collect anything that does come out, just to be sure I don't lose anything. Well, it's working, except for one spot here. But all the way to the way down the table, it's working pretty well. Um, I don't know if you can see here, if I can get that out of the light. You, there's particles going down the table at a slow enough rate. I, I'll actually be able to see if there's any gold and catch it before it goes down. So it's, it's good. I mean... I can see every particle. The camera makes it harder to see. It doesn't focus as well because of the water flowing. You can see the surface of the water flowing. But you can really clearly see what's going down. So if a piece of gold is missed from up here in this little pile, now I'm using a brush. I can't do it when I'm on camera, but I'm using the brush to break that up. Actually, what I've seen on videos, let me see. People take a, a water droplet and sort of trash that, break up that grouping there 
but it's hard to do while holding the camera. But anyway, if any gold does try to slip down, I'll see it coming down through here. There you get a good view. That's a really good view. So it's going pretty slow, pretty smooth, gentle flow. And I get a good view of everything. So I like it. Well, there it is. From end to end. By the way, anything that comes on down here, I've already watched it flow by. There's no gold. And I'm collecting all of the magnetics. In the future, I'll pre filter. But I'm collecting all of the magnetics for building generators for my electronics lab. It makes a good magnetic core for the generators. And then I'll rinse it off in a bowl down here. And that way I'm uh, conveniently sort sorting out what I want as I go. And what's unwanted goes down in the pan below. Well, one thing I have to say, this is much easier than panning but the heavies by hand concentrates and letting the water sort it out down the table is actually easier than trying to take it out with a magnet uh, to take out the magnetic materials with a magnet in a bowl um, I let the water sort things on down and then I hit it with a magnet down here and take out the magnetic materials that I want to save and then I watch for gold as it goes. It's so relaxing. I mean, it can't get easier than this. Well, I just stopped the milling table because I found a speck of gold. I don't know if we can see it on camera. It's right here. It's tiny, but it shows that it's working. There it is. Uh, well, anyway, you can see it. It's that little speck sticking out at the end right there. I don't know if we're gonna, well, you can see it right there. So there's gold right there being recovered. And uh, I had panned this. This was a little pan that I had sifted out um, to 50 mesh. And I took out 100 mesh and I panned it manually in a pan and I couldn't find it. That's, I mean, that's little. That's really tiny. So my Miller table's working, but it was starting to fall, so it's not 100%. So I'm going to suck that up and keep it, but it just shows that it is, it was the last thing behind on here. And I did take out the black sands, the uh, magnetic sands first, which makes it easier to run. So that is what I'd call success for now. I do have a little bit too high water flow, so I'm going to have to work on that. I realized I had the valve way open. But it did stay behind, and I was able to catch it. So, it works. There's another one. I don't know if I can see with the water flowing. I might have to shut off the water. So this is working really well. This one right there. Yeah, right there. That little speck. So... That's some super fine gold. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm really surprised. Let me snuff that up before I, I lose that. I stopped the table again for another speck right there. You can see that one better. That one shows it better. Here's another one. It's just... The, the water is receding and drying out quick. It's really drying air in here. Right? Oh, where's my finger? Oh, uh, where's my finger? Right there. See it? Right in that dry spot. So it's working. The Miller table's doing its job. That's, that's gold that I had panned and I didn't find. I'm finding super, super fine gold in here. And that was just a little tiny bit that I had. And this uh, little very tiny bit in the bottom of a pan that I'm finding fine gold in. I don't even know how I'm going to recover that. It's so fine. I don't even think I can show you with the magnifying glass. There's so much gold on that table. Uh, it's impossible. 
There's so much fine gold in that table, there's no way that you can see some of it, I guess, with the camera. It's just, I mean, there's all kinds of flakes right there. It's crazy. It's so tiny, though. I have no idea how I'm going to get out of that, but I, wouldn't, I never saw it panning. That is super, super fine gold. I don't know how I'm ever going to get that up. So there it is, guys, my homemade Miller table. Just converted my sluice box into a Miller table. I'm going to experiment with a mat in there. I didn't finish cleaning it up, but I'll do that later. I had uh, concentrated that out of a bucket of sand from my yard, and I can't believe how much gold I've been throwing away for the past year, unknowingly, from the sand in my yard. I had no idea... There was so much super, super fine stuff that I wasn't paying out. And uh, the blue bowl wasn't getting it either. So I can't believe what I've discovered and how much I threw away. I'd say there's maybe only a penny, maybe a couple cents in value there total. But it works. So I'm going to, on a future video, I'm going to find some a mat for that to see if I can improve its function even better. But it's pretty cool. So there's my homemade Miller table. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Please uh, like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And stay tuned for more exciting stuff. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Homemade Miller table conversion.